This is War Room Moments, the show that takes you around the world to share interviews with some of the most successful and most relevant people on the planet, hear their stories, and get the most important business lessons they have learned on their road to success, and get exclusive advice on how to implement their success into your life and business. War Room Moments is brought to you by the Strategic Advisor Board. Here's your host, Jason Miller. Welcome to this episode of War Room Moments. Um, I'm your podcast host, Jason Miller, and today I have a special guest. His name is Kevin, and this episode is going to be a little bit different than what you're used to hearing about because Kevin and I are both veterans, and we're going to have a little bit of a different discussion topic and, uh, you know, more how you can help su support a veteran cause through Kevin, which I a thousand percent support because I'm a veteran myself. So welcome to the show, Kevin. Can you just introduce yourself a little bit and, and talk about uh, what you got going on? Well, first of all, my name is Kevin Corella, and like you, I'm a vet. Um, I, my dad was a World War II Marine. My grandfather was in World War I and uh, the French Foreign Legion. My older sisters, I was born in Alaska to a family of 10 in a subsistence style living we were we had to shoot enough caribou and moose and bear and pick enough berries and uh, catch enough salmon to to meet our needs through the winter time or we literally would have a very bad winter um, my older sisters married vietnam guys in uh, uh, army navy air force and or army navy and marines in the, the vietnam era I came along, joined the military when there wasn't any fighting going on, but I was already a bush pilot in Alaska and they offered to teach me to fly helicopters. And I'm like, well, that sounds cool. <laughs> so a little did I know that my life would be radically changed and the trajectory of my life would be radically changed. Um, spent a lot of time in business uh, prior to uh, going into the military and then after the military. But the military had a massive impact on me and it had a massive impact um, uh, uh, for, for, since then for the rest of my life. My children and my nephews followed me into the military and we lost uh, two, uh, we lost a nephew and we lost a son. Um, and so, but, but beyond that, what we did is, so let me back up a little bit. So my son, Jason, so love your name. My son, Jason was my Marine and uh, he, uh, he sent me an email about on a second combat tour. Both my boys were wounded in Iraq first. One of them is 100% disabled, but he's doing fantastic now because he's married. He's got a fantastic faith and an amazing wife, and it has seen him through a lot. Um, anyway, Jason sent me an email on a second combat tour, and he said, uh, Dad, you know that if I don't, uh, if, he said, you know I'm not a, a pessimist, but if I don't make it, through this, I want you to scatter my ashes in the Bahamas and do a shot of Jameson for us on the beach. <laughs> and the Bahamas was where he was, he and his fiance were going to get married. And anyway, I didn't listen to that at all. I, 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 I started to read it. I saw what it was, realized what it was. And I closed the email. I didn't, I didn't listen to it until the Marines showed up in my door and uh, I had to go open it up. Anyway, to lighten this up a little bit, when we went, we took 29 of us to the Bahamas and I couldn't remember if he said, do a shot of Jameson, do a bottle of Jameson or do a case of Jameson on the beach. So 29 of us, including 13 of his Marines made sure we covered all possible bases to, to honor his, his wishes. But uh, we lost 18 Marines on that deployment. Within a year of them returning, we'd lost 18 more of his Marines to suicide. Since in the year of 2021, we lost an average of 22 veterans a day to suicide. We've got to find more ways. We've got to find creative ways. We've got to find, uh, I don't want to get political here, but we're spending money outside our borders. We're spending money so many other places, and yet we're not protecting our own. We're not taking care of our own. And, I, and I'm blessed. I, I got knocked out of the sky a couple of times. Um, uh, when I got home, though, I, I'm very blessed. Not that I didn't have struggles, but I'm blessed. And it, because the right people, the right 
circumstances came into my life and allowed me to move through a lot of that. Just when you think you're you're done with it and you've got that box buried and welded shut and stuffed about 10 feet down and you planted an oak tree on top of it so it'll never be open, <laughs> something comes along and, and rips that back open again. But uh, what can we do today? Bringing this all back to veterans. What can we do today? These books that I'm writing, I, I, I didn't mean to write them. I didn't intend to write them. I'm not a real author. But one day to repeat what we talked about earlier, I'm uh, in Durango, Colorado on an on a overnight as, a, as an airline pilot. And I woke up with this crazy movie playing in my head. And it's a movie because it kept playing even after I woke up. And it was so intriguing that I couldn't go back to sleep. And all I cared about was going back to sleep. So I thought, well, I'll write some of this down. And like I said, I'll write some of this down on my cell phone. And then I can go back to sleep. I'll get it out of my head. I wrote 20,000 words on that cell phone, by the way. It, and it just was pouring out of me. And my thumbs were wearing out. I, I didn't tell anybody I was writing the book because nobody would believe it. Uh, matter of fact, when they finally published the book, they wanted to put my picture on the back of the cover. And I said, nobody wants to see a bald guy on the, on, you know, on the <laughs> cover of a book. And the, and the publisher goes, Kevin, if we don't put your picture on there, nobody will believe you wrote it. <laughs> and uh, anyway, the, the book was all about, well, for me, first of all, it was tearing off some scabs that I thought were healed scars. And it turned out they were just scabs. Um, but the book wrote itself in 12 days. And, and I have got so many emails from people. I had no idea of, it, of its value. But when you get emails from, uh, for instance, uh, diving back into the, the difficult part, um, a young Marine's wife sent me a, a letter telling me that her husband lost his best friend. So she's trying to figure out words to comfort her husband and then she was best friends with that marine's wife and so she's got these two people that are very important to her in her life and she's trying to find words and i i don't take any credit for the words in olivia's hope i just wrote them down they just, I, i'm a writer downer i'm not an author but as they came out of me they they and and got to the page the the healing and, and maybe it was just that maybe it's just sharing mm -hmm some of the burden, maybe, maybe the story, and it's a fiction story, although a tremendous amount of these books parallel events in my own life um, and, and around me, but maybe it's just the fact that it, in a way you're sharing or, or somebody's sharing a burden, or I'm not the only one that has, has to deal with this. And we can carry this all the way through to these soldiers that maybe they come home and they're not married, or maybe they don't have somebody at home that's supportive or or maybe they don't like okay so my son and I, I apologize i'm going all over the place but um it's okay it's all right you know i was 23 years old i'm flying a 16 million dollar helicopter actually i'm not a real apache pilot either i was more i was a scout pilot i flew with guys but we're all out there we're all young and we we were really good at what we did, but we still made mistakes. We sc still screwed up. And to this day, I wish I could go back and change a few things that I did. I did. I thought I was the only one that felt that way. And uh, um, my son and uh, my oldest boy, the uh, Joshua is his name. And if you ever start reading any of those books, you'll meet these guys um, from time to time. But anyway, Josh and I are, are sitting there and, and uh, we, we like to share a, Irish whiskeys. Jameson is uh, is high on our on our list, obviously. But uh, I found a bottle of Hunter Proof Knot, the Knot, mm. and so my son and I are sitting there just by ourselves uh, at his house, and we're sipping on this, and we're saluting guys that didn't that aren't with us anymore, and and uh, and we're we're and out of the blue, Josh goes, "Man, Dad, do you ever feel like uh, do you ever think back on on situations and wish you'd have done something better or?" Uh, Suddenly, I realized that I wasn't the only one that felt that way, that here my son had a stellar career as well. And if it wasn't for him getting blown up, uh, his career would have would have. Uh, uh, I can't really say what he was doing, but his career was stellar anyway. And, I'm, and it's kind of weird. I was thinking I hold him in high. I hold all my my sons and my nephews are like my sons as well. They. I hold them in such high regard. And I thought, well, crap, if he felt that way, 
and I felt that way, that means there's got to be other veterans that, that look back and go, Gads, I wish I'd have done some this better or that better or made a better decision. In, in, in Anyway, so I, I guess that's what I'm trying to bring forward is that you're not alone. People, guys, we're not alone. And and then how do you find a way to to express that? How do you find a way to heal? Um, yeah, you know, right. I can tell you, I thought I, 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 I had healed from my wounds. I would have said five, six times in my life, I thought, okay, I'm over that. And, you know, and then something comes up. It's like having a, a lump on your arm, thinking it's healed over, and then you nick it on something, and all of a sudden, it's, it wasn't sure. healed up at all. So, so, well, I mean, look, I, I kind of look at, you know, everybody has a healing process, right? So really the, the, the wonderful thing and what I think um, is you've went through this great experience with um, being blessed to write these books and they came out of you. And those are healing reflections, right? And that's what I take away from this, um, in this conversation, is the power of, of self-healing and then being able to help other people heal too, right? So it's, you know, me being a veteran myself, combat veteran too, and, you know, I don't believe that there's ever a true way to heal, right? You just try to compartmentalize. Um, there are certain things in life that you go through that they're always going to be there, right? No matter what. You, you can try to put them in a box, bury them 10 feet down with an oak tree, like you said before, right? <laughs> but, but you know what? You're going to have that interaction at some point in your life and it's going to pop the lid right off. Right. Um, and, and you know what, in, in my view, I almost look at it as a good thing sometimes because it brings you back to reality and it brings you back to wanting to do more. Right. It's like my books, all of them, I match to homes for heroes, all the sales and what you're doing here is very powerful and what you can do further um, or where it will go, right? I, I don't even probably think you realize it yet where it's going to go. Um, most likely not. But, but, you know, I see what you're doing as uh, it's important, right? Because there's tons of veteran support, but but, you know, a lot of it is veteran support, right? It is, but it isn't, right? People like to say veteran support. Um, it's a nice buzzword. But um, in the end, what does that really look like? What difference are they making, right? Because it isn't about, well, let me just shell out some money. That doesn't fix here, right? Money doesn't solve the problem. And... You know, it's more like, what is that support structure and support system around you that um, is actually doing something for you? And that's where what you're doing right now can make a massive difference. One of the things that this, so this started out as just a, a, a very small book launch. We weren't, I wasn't expecting mm -hmm. anything. And then out of the blue, some people got involved. June, uh, she owns a, a art beachside in Ponce Inlet. She heard about the book launch and she's been trying to figure out how to create scholarships to get veterans into it. Basically, she's got a studio that if you want to try your hand at ceramics or pottery, she's got a, a wheel there that you can use. If you want to try your hand at painting acrylics, she's got that there. If you want to try your hand at, at broken glass and putting back putting things back together, which I think is very apropos. She's got that there. And she's been trying to find a way uh, to encourage veterans to come in and try it. And so she asked if we could have the book launch there at her studio. 
And then all of a sudden, the Lions, the Veterans Administration, the or not Veterans Administration, Veterans Association of Ponce Inlet, the, the city of Ponce Inlet, everybody started getting together. And, and we established a, a scholarship fund for veterans that want to try it or their family members that want to that want to try. It. Maybe they can find a, 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 a release of some sort. You know, I don't care if it's swimming with dolphins. There, there's power in that. There's power in the. Uh, in in art in in finding release there's power in in holy cow look at look at what the service dogs have been able to do for veterans I, karaoke i don't care what it is if you find whatever it is mm-hmm. if, if you can find it if if we find ways to to allow it because just because you came home with all your fingers and toes in your legs and your arms and your eyes does not mean you don't have these scars and you don't have these scabs. And if you can find ways to express yourself, and it may not even be an expression of, of combat or whatever, but find an outlet, a release for this energy. You know, sometimes I, I call it the, the monster, or the beast within me for one of the things that I cannot concentrate unless there's something, there's some music in the background with no words to it. And that kind of occupy, I say it, it occupies the beast and allows me to to breathe and to settle down and to do something, whatever I need to do. Um, whatever those, finding those releases. And and it, it, I love what you said, money does help, but money doesn't do the fixing. It's what the money can, what you use it for, how you deploy it, how you employ it. You know, I'm not excited about this and I have no passion or, or, or drive, obviously towards this, but what can we do? And and if and, and I, I made the statement the other day, if we can stop one veteran from eating his gun, just one, then mm-hmm. we started to win. And then we find another one and we find another one and we find another one. And however, and, and you're so right. I, I am in a world that I never expected to be in with these books. Um, by the way, War Child is coming out on May 14th. The sequel to that is it's coming out of my head so fast. It's nearly completed. Um, these and I have no idea where it's going to go. I don't know what it's going to be, but I I believe there's a reason behind it because I didn't ask for it. I never thought it would be me. This is a world I've never imagined I would be even even tertiary uh, related to tertiary. I'm, I'm not even going to try that word again. <laughs> anyway, um, my, my, uh, my editors, well, she, uh, she said, I've got double the time in this book than I should. And I said, I told you, I didn't know what I was doing. And she laughed and she goes, well, there is that you don't know how to use a participle phrase or something like that. She goes, but I find myself sinking into the story and then I forget to edit. <laughs> um, yeah. It's comments like that. And many, many combat vets have read, are, are reading these books right now. And I, and I sent it out to men and women. 60% are buying it are women and 40% are buying the books are men. And they both get what they need out of it. This, this uh, reviewer from the East Coast, she said this book, and she's referring to Olivia's Hope, the first one. She said, it's got so many facets to it that no matter what your filter of life that you see the world through, something's going to reflect back into your soul. And I thought that was way more profound than this army aviator ever felt. <laughs> um, sure. But it's, it's finding people, it's impacting people. It's, it's, and, and, I, and I, I take no credit for it. All the glory to God. I take no credit for it because this story poured through me. I didn't sit there and stroke my beard and go, hmm, I want this to happen next. And well, for instance, this, the war child, um, I'm typing away on War Child, not knowing that the, the title was going to be War Child. I'm just typing away. And all of a sudden, a sentence, um, I typed a sentence that I didn't like because suddenly, I, I mean, put it this way as I typed that sentence, um, the air went out of the room. I started to sweat. And I thought, ooh, I don't want to go there. So I quit writing. I left it for a year. I came back a year later and. <laughs> And that sentence is still there on the page, right? And I erased it. And I'm thinking, okay, where's this going to go? And I'm waiting for something to happen. I'm waiting for something to happen. I'm waiting for something to happen and nothing happens. And then, uh, and then I slowly retyped that sentence that I had erased. And then the next sentence came 
And then the next sentence came and the next, and then suddenly it's a 300, 400, 500, 600 page story manuscript that I had to, to, so War Child is, is the first half of that. And, and my editor helped me find a natural pause in the story so that we, we didn't have to have this, you know, Gutenberg Bible version, you know, thousand page, whatever. Um, But it's like, I didn't have a choice. I didn't have a choice. And the only reason why I went back to write the book, because the Livius Hope fans were bugging me. They were actually getting angry with me because I wasn't producing the sequel. And they were so invested in the characters. They wanted to know what happens next. They wanted to know about Link and Victoria and Jenny. And uh, matter of fact, Victoria uh, is the only person in Olivia's Hope that I didn't get to name. She's the only character that I didn't get to name. And uh, um, when it was Link's wife. So Link's wife did this and Link's wife said that. And I thought, gosh, Link's wife deserves a name. And my wife was visiting our, our kids in New Zealand at the time, and she's a redhead, and Victoria happens to be a redhead in the book. But I called her up, and I, when I was little, I couldn't walk. As a matter of fact, I was told I probably would never walk, and I spent uh, a great deal of time in, in wheelchairs. And, and uh, some awesome folks, uh, similar to St. Jude's now, they don't exist anymore, but similar to St. Jude's came along uh, my, beside my folks and says, we think we can fix him. Four years later, I'm taking my first steps. Uh, at nine years old. Anyway, but when you're in a wheelchair, kids are cruel, no matter where you are. Kids can be very cruel. And I remember this kid named Michael sticking up for me. He was popular. And not only St. Michael holds, I hold in high regard, but this kid was popular. He didn't have to be nice to me. And he was nice to me. And I always thought Michael's a great name. So I called my wife up and I said, Hey, have you ever, uh, do you ever have anybody in your life like that? And she says, Victoria in, in junior high, she says, I was the biggest Coke bottled, stringiest haired, skinniest, no boobs, girl in junior high school everybody picked on me and yet victoria offered to share her locker with me and i go oh so vicky huh she goes no victoria she called herself victoria (laughs) i'm thinking okay the good note so i wrote that down so when she's when when but i didn't want to tell her i was writing a book because i didn't want to embarrass myself i didn't want to you know especially what if it didn't get written what if i didn't finish it i had no idea what i was doing anyways i'm i'm just going and going but the book tends to touch people in in ways that I had no idea and I take no credit for it. Well, here's here's the thing about it. The you know, you like to say you're not an author um all these things, but the fact is is you are. Um you are the author and you're a vessel. You've been chosen as a vessel to do something that none of us know what you're going to do next. Right. (laughs) So, and, and you know what, that's pretty, that's pretty damn cool really to be able to be that vessel and use it in all the good ways that you could possibly use it in is phenomenal. It really is. And, you know, I, I know we've talked a lot about a, about veterans and things like that. But, but this, this stems far deeper than veterans. When you talk about post-traumatic stress, you know, we have uh, obviously police and fire and Jesus, just the, you know, mom with two kids in the back that got hit by a drunk driver and both kids got killed. Right. I mean, this is far deeper. Right. And, and that's why a lot of these, great stories like um, have poured out of you can affect people in more than just one way. Um, And I'm intrigued and have to read the books now myself. So (laughs) now only for army infantry, uh, they make an audible version. (laughs) Perfect. (laughs) Did I say that out loud? (laughs) It's all good. I'll take it. <laughs> I apologize. But, but my uh, wife's gonna smack me now. <laughs> nah, no, it's all good. I I've got uh, another Marine buddy of mine, couple Marine buddies of mine, and we just go at it. My neighbor that lives next to me is one of the former CEOs of uh, Oracle. Um, he's an ex-Marine major in Vietnam, and 
every Monday night we watch uh, some sports show together and we don't really watch any TV. We just basically heckle each other back and forth for three hours <laughs> and smoke cigars and drink scotch and, and, and enjoy life. So, you know, the other day I had a world war two uh, Navy retired Navy, obviously mm. retired world war two. Uh, and he was like 104 and his wow. son is like 80 and they're, they're on my jet. And, uh, and he looks gaunt. His mouth is kind of slack and hanging open and very thin. And his skin is really um, almost transparent. And, uh, and he's wearing this Navy hat. And the Navy hat was almost too big for him. And I went, I went back there and I said, hey, sir. I said, they misspelled your hat. And he's like, what? I said, it, it's supposed to say A-R-M-Y, not N-A-V-Y. And he thought for, and then he started laughing. And then he flipped me some trash talk. Uh, the, 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 he <laughs> trash talked back. And then I flipped him some. The son started crying. He said, I haven't heard my dad laugh like that in a decade. Mm. And it was so cool. And I, it only lasted about uh, maybe five minutes tops because I had to get back in the flight deck and, and fly. Right, right. But I realized that that's, that's not my generation. That's intergenerational. That's a... That's Navy, Army, Air Force, Marines. Uh, uh, my family is repre re represented in uh, even the Coast Guard uh, across the way. Um, and that that kind of trash talking is can be very, very enjoyable, very valuable. Yeah. And it, at Thanksgiving dinners, there was so much trash talk at our house when you had all five rep branches represented. Oh, I bet. <laughs> Well, hey, um, all really, really, really good conversation here. How do people come to support you with purchasing the books? Where do people go to get a copy? So right now they're on Amazon. Um, it turns out I'm the only Kevin Carella in the whole world because it costs 99 cents to get kevincarella.com. Um, they're building the website as we speak. It's up. I think it's live, but it's still got lots of chunks to, to fit into it. Um, there's a, there's a movie trailer, um, for Olivia's Hope. Uh, you can Google it, uh, Google Olivia's Hope trailer to get more of an idea of what that book's about. Um, you'll see a younger me standing in front of one of my combat helicopters. You'll see my son that I lost. By the way, my son, Jason showed up in Olivia's Hope, the one that I had lost prior, prior to the book. He showed up in the book and, I didn't want to write it. I, he, he shows up and I, 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 I thought I would write around it and, uh, and not put that scene in there, even though it played out perfectly in my mind. And uh, people were saying, there's something missing. We love the book, but there's something missing in the manuscript and the original manuscript. I went back and I had to, and I wrote that scene in there. They didn't know who he was to me, but they went, Oh, that's what, that's what was missing. Yeah. Anyway. So, so uh, Olivia's Hope trailer, you can Google that. They just came out with a trailer for uh, War Child. I think both of them are now available. Uh, you can Google War Child trailer uh, or Lincoln James Legacy. Um, on our book launch on May 14th, every book, everything that we sell. By the way, we're going to try to shoot for an Amazon number one bestseller. Um, nice. Olivia's Hope just floating out there by itself out of 2 million competitors. She's hanging out about 2,000, number 2,000, uh, 2,000. I've seen it float between 2,000 and 4,000 anyway, which blows me away uh, and, and makes me proud at the same time. Um, yeah. But uh, anywhere books are sold, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, um, uh, Audible, uh, anywhere yeah. books are sold. And I'm not very good at promoting myself. I got to figure out how to answer that question much better. I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. That's all right. For sure. Well, Kevin, thank you for being here. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to be here and share that story. Um, you know, at the beginning, when we first talked, you were like, you, you made the comment. I don't know if this is fit, but this is the war room. Right. <laughs> 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 I can see it. I so can see it. so guess what? It, it doesn't have to always be. Um, we can be transformational, right? Too. So, By the way, sure. I do have a lot of thoughts about business 
in the future. And I have a ton of thoughts that I share with young entrepreneurs about mm -hmm. uh, things, that, brick walls that they don't have to to uh, bloody their forehead on. Um, uh, in the future, we might have a couple yeah. of those conversations. Even though I'm no longer in it, I have participated and been the mover and the shaker in three startups. Um, and uh, anyway, we could have those conversations too. But this one, this this one felt good. And this is the first time I've done something like this. So uh, <laughs> I was quite nervous uh, at the idea of it. But uh, you, you, uh, I, I greatly appreciate you putting me at ease. Yeah, for sure. Well, again, thank you, Kevin. Uh, I appreciate you coming on the show and let us know how we can support you um, with your veteran based cause. Be glad to help support that for sure. All right. Thank you, Jason. All right. Great. Well, hey, thank you for attending this episode of War Room Moment. Remember, dream it, believe it, and achieve it. This is Jason Miller signing off. Thanks for listening to War Room Moments with your host, Jason Miller. Please leave your feedback and visit strategicadvisorboard.com to get the latest and greatest business advisement on the planet. Follow us on social media for updates, and we'll see you on the next episode.